Welcome back to Tools and Track. In my pilgrimage to do as many different forms of motorsport as possible, we are doing the progression today. We go from auto test to sprint. So what is sprint? Well, in a nutshell, it's going from one point to another as fast as humanly possible. Now, yes, it's quite similar to hill climb, but it's not. Listen, we'll get into that in the due course of time. But before you can do any form of motorsport, preparation is key. Now the preparation for doing auto test, not including all the mods I did to the car to try and make it quicker, is pretty much nil. You can turn up, you can race, as long as you've got a club and license. Not quite as simple when it comes to sprint. The reason for that is, like most forms of motorsport, it's bloody dangerous. So you have to prepare yourself and your car to be safe. Now, this is probably going to sound dull, but if you're thinking about doing it, pay attention, because this has to happen. Step one, and strictly speaking, not technically essential for what I'm about to do, we need fat roll cage. Just, just, there we go. Yes. There we go. We have got to a point where obviously the seats are out because I'm fat. Um, we tried to fit this and all of these bits are in the way. Ah, but it's plug and play though. Plug, plug and play? It's plug and play, but everything's wrong. So there's, there's the solution. Plug and play. <laughs> I'm just chopping up my lovely MX-5. Uh, but it's plug and play though. Plug and play. So the, all of this trim for loom and stuff has been popped out as well. So I now need to replicate that over there. Right, this cage by the way. Great big hole. Now that's clearly going to be for the ABS because it's the one thing that it completely obstructs. However, allow me to direct your attention to failure number one. There's the ABS hole <coughs> and there's the hole in the roll cage for it. Great. However, I've marked out all the other holes. Clearly we're going to lose this rubber as well to get it in, but it's now time to drill. That will just need to be another unnecessary hole just so I can clear an ABS sensor, but at least it will. Same on the other side obviously, but let's not touch it. Great. After all of my hard work, Daniel gets to pull the, pull the wrapper off. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have any attachment. It's, it's quite good to wrap her. Uh, right. There should be a chip in there. It's it's a race car now. Race car. Race car. Yeah. At least this is plug and play. I mean, plug and play. It comes with challenges. It comes with some challenges. All we need to do is just cut a lot of the car out. Yeah, that's that's it. Just just chop a significant amount of car out of the way. It's in. Really, didn't we? It's in. Uh, give it the, the violence, the berries, the business. It's not going anywhere. It's going anywhere. Right, so why was that not essential? Well, crucially, when you do sprints, you can enter into different classes. Now, as it happens, I don't have forced induction in any way, and my car's more or less as it left the factory. Therefore, we can apply for basically a road or production class. What that means is you are pretty much left alone as far as safety regs go. So you don't technically, technically need a roll gauge, but what sprints and hill climbs are, are high speed and tight. Very tight on courses. So, whilst I don't need one, I'd be an absolute moron not to fit one. Now that that's done, what's next? Well, we'll jump back to the finer prep of the car in a moment. But as we are jumping up a class and the safety risks have increased, you need to prep this. Right, welcome to Tools and Track Editing Towers. So, what safety devices do you need to do sprints? Well, first up, and probably what's been on everyone's mind since I started doing any form of motorsport, a lid. Now, you don't just go out and buy that, which is, you know, go-karting, non-FIA approved, basic lid. That's, that helmet's not really gonna be any cop. What you need is one of these, which is an FIA approved in-date helmet. Now, less I spotted, 
man with no glasses on. And before anyone asks, the glasses fit too. So this is a lid, not cheap, about 300 quid. Thankfully, because I'm old and I've had a recent birthday, my wee mammy and my wee daddy bought me that because, well, they worry and it's a safety thing. So thank you. Next up, because it's not just that, you also need to do the gloves. These will need to bed in a bit. Also, my hands are covered in cuts from fitting a roll cage to a car, so that's not exactly ideal. These aren't the worst thing in the world to have to do. They're good, they're grippy, keep a good hand in the wheel, but fundamentally, they're fire resistant. We'll get to that. That was also a birthday gift from uh, Mrs. Tools and Track. So, thanks. That is good getting old. This is where the birthday goodwill runs out. You need to put your hand in your own wallet again. By the way, stop me if you see a colour theme coming in. So for the first time in forever, you're going to see me in something that's not safety boots or <laughs> skater shoes. Fire resistant shoes. Now, I don't actually think these are mandated in the regs. I couldn't see a specific mention of it, but from buying everything else, we may as well get these. Handy for the heel toe. Nice narrow heel inset thing. Just need to make sure they fit. The rug that really ties the room together. The full race suit. Now, Thankfully, because getting old, this didn't actually skin me what it would have cost, but if you're going to move up in the motorsport world and you need to buy all this, brace yourself for the sum of about 750 quid. So this is the mandatory stuff. Like I said, the cage wasn't, but it kind of was, let's face it. And as you can see with this, it's not just a go-karty type suit either. FIA approval must be in place for these as well. The reason being, that is as close to modern day asbestos as you're going to get. Also, you'll notice that there's lapels on the shoulders. Why? Well, that's because if you pass out in a crash, the marshals can actually haul you out of the car using something that's a bit better grip than your Rockstars. Now, all of that grim thought out of the way, let's see if it all fits. So we've got the PPE side of things sorted. The last thing we need to deal with is the car. So the first thing to get myself ready for sprint is this. We need to get a timing light breaker in the front of the car. Yes, I have made this myself. It's got to be sat in black and it's got to be a regulation height. Next up, we need to put rounders on the side. This is for the numbering that you'll be allocated for the sprint. Now you may not know this, but you can't actually drive on the King's Highway with numbers on it. So we'll apply these at the track. After that, whilst not technically a requirement, if I ever gravel it, I'm going to have to get towed out. So always wise to put some indication as to where these things are going to be. Last of all, we need to make sure that we've got some indication, if I do bin it, for a marshal to know how to turn the engine off. By the way, it does pay to have a partner in crime who has a printer. So with all that done, all that's left, let's race. Morning all, welcome to Kames. I have got here, passed scrutineering, which is always a bit of a worry, especially on a new race series. Uh, you're also gonna have to put up with me with baseball cap today because it's a helmet day and therefore the hair is gonna be an absolute shit show otherwise. So we're gonna do our first lap shortly. I'm not putting the camera up because, uh, yeah, I'm just not at the moment. It's wet and there's various issues. So I'll get some outside footage hopefully from somebody. Uh, practice lap means practice lap. It's a damp day uh, and I've never driven this track before so it's not going to be worth watching but we'll get that out of the way and then I'll take you a wee paddock walk and we'll see what's going on. But nerves up. First sprint. Do have the wee butterflies in the stomach. I'll probably be fine once I get the first practice run out of the way but everybody here has so far been very friendly, uh, very helpful. So yeah, seems to be quite a positive event. First run done. Well, it was a practice run, so it won't be fast. But uh, yeah, they've put me next to something to remind me to get my finger out.
day two got the car warmed up it is fogging damp so another challenging warm-up this time we're doing it in reverse this time i've got a camera securing cord with me might have forgot that yesterday hence the lack of much in the way of footage so now i have a familiarity with the track we know what we're in for uh it's going to be damp but i'll try my best best time yesterday 102 so i think my tactic today is to match that and i'll feel like i'm making progress obviously i was last in class uh with everything i did yesterday but i'm not even remotely disappointed in that we got through the day and i didn't crash for an event like this my first ever sprint i am happy with that result repeat the same today and then we will see how we do me back looks quite plain now doesn't it anyway you're all wanting to know how i did unfortunately when it comes to sprints the context for you is pretty much non-existent because on my clockwise runs i did about a 102 which is frankly a benchmark it's not going to mean anything else there's other people that do games in various classes and whatnot for an mx5 in my first go it was okay anti-clockwise on the second day things got a bit better i got down to about a 95 in fact 95.16 so i now know where my benchmarks are for this so i understand that if i ever go back to games i can improve in these times what it means for winning or losing well i was in a class with caterham super lights and a ferrari 355 so no i was never expecting to win but i wasn't in it to win it i was in it to try it that's a sprint out of the way the next thing for this is going to be a hill climb but we're going to pepper in some auto soles first i think after all, 
it's fun and easy way to get some seat time. So I hope you've enjoyed Kames. If you just found this because you were at Kames, I hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like, bell and subscribe thing because there'll be more to come, obviously. If you want to support a bit more than that, patreon.com slash and track. And until next weekend, guys, drive safe.